As soon as I had graduated from university, my next step was to finally start climbing the career ladder, as most people called it. I majored in a fairly useless degree, but I enjoyed it anyhow, and I didn't really know what sort of job I wanted. I still lived with my parents, and nearly every day they kept going on and on about a job and a career. I had no idea where to start, and there were huge regrets of studying a fairly useless degree, and it seemed like only I was the one out of my classmates who was stuck. It all happened so fast. Like, at a moment you are a student and enjoying the student life, then all of a sudden, you're in the competition of a life trying to climb the career ladder. I kept seeing people I knew, like my friends, relatives, and people in general all having jobs and just generally either complaining about it or just randomly talking about them. I didn't feel ready for work. I felt maybe university as a whole didn't really set me up for the reality of life. Then, throughout my social media and the main two being Facebook and Twitter, I saw an ad which the title read, Climb the Career Ladder Now, and I was instantly hooked. I clicked on it, and it took me to a website and the first thing I read was, we are looking for new graduates looking to start work. No experience needed. And I contacted them straight away, just hoping there were answers I was looking for. I got a phone call from a very positive man who had this way of uplifting your confidence. And he kept on talking about the career ladder and how there are no limits to finding jobs. He gave me an address, time, and date to visit a special place and I was extremely excited. When I got to the building, it looked really old, but the door was open and it had a sign with my name on it and an arrow pointing toward the door. As I went inside the building, there was absolutely nothing inside apart from a ladder in the middle of a huge empty space. The ladder was just standing on its own without any support, and it went up and up without any ending. I got a call from that man again, and he told me to simply go ahead and climb the career ladder, and good luck. I'd never been afraid of heights, and so I climbed up the career ladder, hoping to find a great job. As I climbed, I dared not look down, and all of a sudden, I could hear machinery and things banging. It sounded like factory work, and I found myself in some abandoned metal factory some of the machines were running on their own. I walked around and no one was around. I didn't mind doing factory work and working with metal. It seemed easy enough. I decided to get back on the career ladder, as there was no one around to talk to. I climbed higher this time, and as I climbed higher, I could hear frying noises like something was cooking. I could hear quite soft talking and I ended up in some restaurant. And as I climbed off the ladder and into the restaurant, everyone looked at me in such fear. All of the customers were looking at me from their tables, but I couldn't see any staff. And I didn't mind working in restaurant serving or cooking food. But every customer was staring at me like something was wrong. So I had to leave. I went back to climbing the career ladder once again where I found empty offices with the computers turned on and every other technological equipment in the office was also turned on, but with no one around who I could talk to. Something was seriously off, and I could just sense it. I kept on climbing higher, as my faith on the career ladder wasn't fading. I saw a construction site this time where the machines were just working on their own, without any builders or workers controlling them. Then I received a phone call from that guy who invited me to climb the career ladder, and his voice wasn't enthusiastic anymore, but fearful. Hey pal, how high did you climb the career ladder? He asked me worryingly. I'm on the construction site, I replied. Okay, uh, climb back down now. Something bad has happened which I wasn't aware of and my supervisors weren't quick enough to tell me. No, no, 
Well, you see, all of the jobs have literally been invaded by machines, and they weren't too pleasant with the human workers. He told me. Then as I looked deeper into the construction site, and when I observed the car park, I saw the builders, construction site office workers, and laborers had all been mutilated and murdered. I then started to hear something electronic walk toward me, and I started to run, and began climbing back down the career ladder. As I started climbing back down, as quick as I could, I could hear a monstrous metallic screech and the robot machine started climbing down the ladder after me. As I saw the office again, I could now notice that under the tables and desks were the murdered office workers. And there were more robots running toward the career ladder now and trying to climb down to get me. I saw the restaurant again, but this time I saw every customer crying. And then the robots in the restaurant started killing all these people while they were chained to tables. I climbed down, even though it seemed so far away. But when I made it back to the bottom, all of the robots stopped chasing me and started climbing back up. They then started to break the career ladder, piece by piece. I was told on the phone that they would contact me when another career ladder appears. I told them don't bother, and then I'll search for jobs my own way. You ever play one of those Ouija boards to contact ghosts or some dead loved one from beyond the grave? Well, me and my friends have. I've always been confused about the whole supernatural and strange elements in our world, and I truly don't know how to think about it all, nor form any proper opinion about it. The power of belief is truly a powerful thing, and it can shape and change our society for better or for worse. It controls our day-to-day -day actions. When someone, or anyone for that matter, believes in anything, they will always be capable of doing many crazy things for the sake of their belief. Belief is our perception of everything around us, and it even forms our opinion of people. I've always wanted to see a ghost, and I mean a real, live ghost. It could be any kind of ghost, just floating around, moving something, and I, I just want to know what it would feel like to be in the presence of one. I've watched so many videos of ghosts in people's houses, abandoned buildings, and people using Ouija boards to contact them. It annoys me how people start screaming or running from whichever room there may be a ghost or some supernatural entity inside. I always tell myself, if I ever catch a ghost, I'm going to stay with the ghost for as long as possible. Now my two friends, Patrick and Jake, came over to my house to play with the Ouija board I had bought. The three of us were super excited to use it, and hopefully something would reply back to us. I dimmed the lights in the living room, and my parents were out so we had the whole house to ourselves. For the first hour, literally nothing happened, and the surge of true disappointment started to come over all of us. Then out of boredom, I decided to move the Ouija board cup myself, pretending that it was a ghost moving it. Jake and Patrick were overjoyed, and I pretended to be excited at the same time, and we were all accusing each other of moving the Ouija board cup, but the three of us denied it. Now Jake had an ex-girlfriend who committed suicide last year, and I don't know what went through my mind at that time, but, but I decided to move the cup pretending it was some ghost, and slowly moving it to the letters about Jake's ex-girlfriend's suicide. The three of us all had our hands on the Ouija board cup, but both Jake and Patrick still didn't know I was actually moving it. At first, I did find it funny, but when Jake started tearing up, I started to regret what I had been doing. I started to realize how stupid I had been. Patrick and Jake truly believed that Jake's ex-girlfriend who was dead was moving the Ouija board cup. To this day, I give myself hell for doing such a thing, and I, I don't know why I thought it would be cool or funny to move the Ouija board. 
it came to a point where it kind of went too far, and I was moving the cup towards where it spelled, I love you, Jake, or I'm heartbroken, Jake. Jake was torn to pieces, and after three hours, we decided to stop. Throughout the night, Jake and Patrick kept texting me, telling me how creeped out they were. Jake was in an emotional state, and I wanted to tell him the truth, that it was actually me moving the cup, but I was... I was too scared of what he might do or what it might mean for our friendship. I felt like a complete idiot. Jake and Patrick tried organizing one more Ouija board night, but I kept on calling it off. The cup never moved on the Ouija board when it was just Patrick and Jake, and they both begged me to come back and join them. I eventually did join them in another night in Patrick's house. In this time, when I moved the Ouija board cup unknown to Jake and Patrick, I decided to pick on Patrick this time. His parents are divorced. Patrick was stunned and couldn't believe what was happening, and after three hours of playing with the Ouija board, we eventually called it quits. Both Patrick and Jake were quite depressed, and I was just digging myself into a deeper hole now. Jake then texted me whenever I'm with them playing the Ouija board. It always seemed to move. Yeah, I replied saying that's just a case of unusual luck or maybe I have some unusual aura or energy around me. Jake then told me he wanted to play the Ouija board again. Some other time. But just the two of us. As he wanted to speak with his ex-girlfriend again. I tried deterring the event, but Jake was persistent and eventually I gave in and I was to go to Jake's house and play the Ouija board with him. I did it again that night, moving the cup and swearing that I wasn't moving it. And Jake himself was swearing that he wasn't moving the cup as well. I secretly moved the cup to make up sentences where it was about his relationship with his dead ex-girlfriend. It got too emotional and Jake ended it. And the next day, I hear from his mother that he hung himself in his room. I couldn't believe what I had just done. There was no note left either. A couple of weeks after Jake's funeral, Patrick wanted to use the Ouija board to try and contact Jake. I tried everything to deter Patrick from playing the Ouija board, but once again, it couldn't stop him. I was at Patrick's house and I told myself I wasn't going to move the Ouija board cup anymore. There was a silence in the air, and Patrick was full on concentrating on the cup and calling out Jake until it actually started to move. I accused Patrick of moving the cup, but he swore to me that he wasn't, and he took his hand off the cup. It was just my hand on the cup now, and it was moving on its own. I couldn't believe what it was spelling out to me. Me and Patrick were calling out to Jake and he spelled out my name, which read, William, the cup mover. And I just threw the Ouija board on the ground and screamed. In that moment, I promised myself to never, ever play the Ouija board game again. During a garage sale at the local park, one guy was selling a whole set of security cameras, including the computer, which he claimed only happened to record things that never happened. The man looking rather disappointed that no one was interested in buying the security cameras that only recorded things that never happened, made me intrigued. I could see he was selling three security cameras with the computer and computer screen. I asked him a few more questions about the three security cameras, and all he told me was that they recorded things that never happened. My mind was rather boggled by all of this, and I decided to buy them. I set three security cameras up in my house. One was my living room, 
and the other was in my kitchen and one was in my bedroom. Looking at the CCTV screen which I set up in the spare room in my house, I saw things which never happened. Like the security camera in my living room showed me being murdered by a burglar breaking into my home. This never happened because sitting inside the spare room while I watched myself being murdered was impossible. It was a terrifying sight to witness anyhow, but I finally came to understand by what the man who sold me the security cameras had meant by saying that they only recorded things that never happened. The CCTV in the kitchen saw something more disastrous. I saw my whole kitchen getting consumed by fire, but when I went down to check, the kitchen was fine. I stood in the kitchen for a couple minutes, and when I went back up to check on the CCTV screen, rewinding the footage didn't show any of me standing there. Because these security cameras only record things that never happened. All I saw was my kitchen burning to bits. I then checked the CCTV in my bedroom and on the screen it showed me partying with a few female models. This was impossible, because how could I be partying with a couple of models in my bedroom when I was in the spare room and clearly, disappointingly, I am not the type to attract female models. A couple of days later, I invited a few friends over to my house, and we were just having a nice quiet party. After it all finished, they all went home, I checked the CCTV footage to see what was caught on camera. I rewinded the recorded footage, and it showed me and my friends arguing with each other and becoming violent. I mean, it showed me that we were all hitting each other and finding objects to use as weapons against each other. Gratefully, this didn't happen, and it was a nice quiet party with good friends of mine. These security cameras showed me many things that never actually happened which were usually life-threatening, serious problems, like murders, fires, and other abnormal situations. Then, as I checked the recording on my CCTV camera on the screen, it showed me nothing but doing boring day-to-day -day life situations, like coming home from work, cooking myself a meal, and watching TV. I didn't know how boring I actually was, but I guess living a normal life is quite boring. I remember making myself some toast and my toaster literally burnt itself and a small fire started to arise. I managed to kill it before it became even worse. On the screen though, as I rewinded the footage, it showed me making toast with no problems or anything to cause a fire and I saw myself eating toast. Then I noticed my more normal life seemed to be on the CCTV footage, which could only mean it never happened. Things around my house started breaking. I started having more accidents and bad luck seemed to be around me. On the footage though, it showed me nothing apart from living a normal life and doing normal chores around the house with no accidents. Whenever I tried to explain to people about where I got my scars from or why a certain place around my house is damaged, they don't believe me because the chances of certain things happening seemed far too far-fetched. When I tried to show them the CCTV footage in the last minute, I remember that the cameras I bought only show things that never happened, and so I look like a fool and feel highly embarrassed. Now the camera is just showing me standing around in my living room, kitchen and bedroom all at the same time, but all alone and doing nothing. This looked all too strange because it must mean that I'm not alone in my house. And it showed a stranger coming out of nowhere. That we were both the best of friends. And this must mean that the stranger is my enemy. I got out of the house and phoned the police. And when they arrived, they checked my whole house. It was the man who sold me the security cameras. He had somehow broke into my house, but he kept on telling the police to check the security cameras. And when they rewinded the footage from two hours before... It showed me and the guy who sold me the cameras living together and him paying me rent. It showed us both living well together, laughing, smiling, and just plainly getting along. 
This did not happen. The police left thinking I had wasted their time, but they didn't believe me when I told them that the security cameras recorded things that didn't happen. And the guy who sold me the cameras had a big, evil smile on his face. Literally a couple days went by with this guy living in my house. He was eating and using my things. Then when I tried confronting him about getting out of my house and also telling him that I will take down the security cameras, I saw him saving a piece of the recording from the CCTV. I demanded that he show me what footage he had taken. When he showed me by rewinding the footage, it showed me murdering him. And he told me if I tried anything to kick him out, he'll disappear. And as an anonymous, he will send this footage which didn't happen straight to the police. And I'll go to jail. I'm literally stuck. And I don't know what to do. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed those terrifying little stories from Short Story 1 on Reddit. If you did, I'll be sure to leave the links to the stories down below so you can go give the author some love. If you liked the video, please make sure to hit the like button, click subscribe, and the little bell so you can be notified when my videos pop up. Tell me how you're enjoying this October extravaganza and who's ready for Halloween in the comments section below. And as always, my Darkness Militia, have a terrifying evening.